Hey everyone, I'm Todd Jones. And I'm Jared Howell. And welcome to What's Up, where we talk about news, events, and missions. Today is International Day of Prayer. Christians all over the world are being persecuted and killed. Today we will choose to pray for these men, women, and children. Pastor Paul and Ron Mills recently attended a powerful leadership conference in Texas a week ago. The two came back motivated and ready to share what they learned. This is why they will be hosting a two-day leadership conference here at Resonate on November 11th and November 18th at 7 p.m. Increasing your leadership skills will affect literally every area of your life, and you don't want to miss it. Church has been going... Whoa. What the is going on back there? Oh, I bet you it's the youth uh, family friends night. That doesn't start till six p.m. They're gonna. Oh man, they're gonna interrupt service. Looks like a lot of fun though. They are going to have video games, laser tag, cider and donuts, and even Gaga ball. Did you say cider and donuts? I did. You can't Whoa. beat them. Whoa. Hey, who shot me? I love your passion. It really, there is, you guys are very fortunate. Um, you really are. And you need to travel and get out a little bit to see how blessed this church is. I love him and his wife. He is, man, God shined upon Pastor Paul when he gave him Colleen. How many of y'all appreciate Colleen? She's out there working. The girl works hard. It's a lot like my wife. My wife sends her love, Misty. I try, I'm still trying to convince her to move back to Michigan. I lived here for eight years. That's how we became such good friends. And I was part of uh, Resurrection Life there in Granville, and, um, but she won't move. She says, you tricked me once to move me the cold, but I'm not take, leaving Texas now. <laughs> She's a Texas girl. I called her last night. I said, I made it back home. She goes, what? I said, I made it back home. She goes, you're not home. You're in Michigan. I go, I know, home. <laughs> she goes, no, this is your home. I go, no, home. <laughs> E.T. call home. It's here, amen. I love Michigan. I love you guys. Been praying for you, praying for your governor. That's another subject. But <laughs> praying for you guys. Uh, but I want to get into this word. Uh, first of all, I'm hyped up right now on sugar because uh, Jackie uh, made me the cookies like she always does. Jackie and Mark, bless you guys. These guys, we go way back to Granville. And uh, she always gives me cookies when I preach here and messes my whole diet up and gets me all <laughs> hyped up. But I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, one of my favorite books. I've really been diving into Corinthians this year uh, in verse 58 um, because God has done so much revelation through those two books, first and second, um, or as um, our president says, number one and number two. Um, uh, that's a joke, but um, anyway, <laughs> two Corinthians. <laughs> but, you know, I found out the Australians say it that way, too, so maybe he's got some Australian in him. 1 Corinthians 15, chapter, uh, verse 58, and it says this, and Lord, I just want to first thank you for this opportunity to share your word to your people, and these are your people, Father. I thank you that they made the, the, they made the, the incredible decision to be here, Lord, um, and, and their courage, Lord, bless them for it, Father, to be here together, together, Father, in one room, and Lord, I thank you for covering them, protecting them, Lord, that no virus has its right in this place. This is God's territory, and it's trespassing. We just, we just command it gone, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just, I just thank you that your word never comes back void. It accomplishes your will, which is good. It's a good thing. It's good news for a reason. So Lord, I thank you. Help me articulate your love to them and your future, which is a good future in Jesus' name. So Here's his word, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. I'm reading from the Living Bible, and it says this. So, my dear brothers, and we can say brothers and sisters, he was just specifically talking to his leaders at his church. There were men there. But he says, my dear brothers, since future victory is assured, that is so important. Since future uh, uh, victory is assured. I want you to take that word in right now. Your, your future is assured. Doesn't, look, doesn't matter how the political arena looks. Doesn't matter how crazy things seem. Our future is secure in God. 
Somebody look at your neighbor and say, that was worth coming right there. Amen? Be strong. Then he tells you how to assure the future. Be strong and steady, always abounding in the Lord's work. Always abounding in the Lord's work. Watch this. Or enthusiastic. This, that, well, they had it up there for a second. <laughs> it disappeared. Uh, but that, I love that. It says, enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. I love that translation. Yeah, yeah. Everything we do for the Lord is not useless. And so I want to talk to you about what I titled staying steady in unsteady times. Staying steady in unsteady times. During these uncertain times, it's essential that we stay strong and steady and always abounding in the work of the Lord, because really, when it gets down to it, ladies and gentlemen, that's all that really matters is the Lord's work. It's the only thing that is um, forever. It's eternal. I, I tell people all the time, don't put your, 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 your trust in, this, in earthly things. It's passing. Listen, our lives are, I mean, I try to take care of this body. I, body, I try to take, you know, eat vitamin, take vitamins and do all the exercise and try to slow down Father Nature, but I can't. I'm, I was just at a doctor's getting an MRI done on my knee, and he comes in, and he says, well, good news and bad news. I said, what's the good news? He goes, I don't have to do surgery on your knee. I go, well, that's good. I said, so why is it hurting? He goes, because you're getting old, <laughs> and your cartilage is wearing out. I said, was well, there anything you can do about that? Nope. I go, thanks, doc. Here's your $5,000 for that. But uh, whatever. I mean, he, he just bakes it. So I told my wife, she says, well, what's up with your knee? I said, I'm getting old. She goes, well, great revelation. I can't stop it. So what am I saying? It, you know, the things that count is God's work. People are the only thing we can take to, to heaven. Do you know that? People. Souls. So I, be nice to people. Because they're the ones you're going to have to live with forever, right? Some of them won't be there, praise God, but most of them that you... No, I'm playing. I'm just playing. There's some people we want to send there, but uh, we, we shouldn't, right? Uh, but listen, steady means, the word steady there is what I want to key in on. I want you to focus on that because that's a powerful word to securing your future in victory. Steady means to be fixed. Stable, anchored, unfaltering. I love that word, unfaltering, because it speaks of strength and bravery, no matter the circumstances. That's what that word means. And in the King James, it uses the word steadfast. Be ye steadfast. And it says unmovable. The picture of, of the Greek word there, it carries a connotation of somebody crossing their legs like this, crossing their hands, and being persistent. Saying, I'm not going to move. I, I think I need help getting back up. No, I'm serious, Mark. Come help me over here. You think I'm joking. <laughs> Be quiet. Okay, quit laughing. I thought about that when I said, God, am I going to be able to get back up? Nope, I couldn't get back up. But, but that's, that's the picture of, of steady, I'm not moving. I'm not moving. I believe in this. I'm, my conviction is in this, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be stable and steady and, and unmovable. I want you to get that picture in you, because that's what Paul is teaching us through the Holy Spirit here. He ha he's being inspired to write this. Hey, if you want to secure, in your, secure your future, be steady and strong. The word strong there is interesting, because it's the word kazak in the Hebrew, and kazak means to be stout, to be firm, to be strong. Watch this. To, uh, to not move, to, to be brave and courageous. It's where we get uh, the, the Greek equivalence of it that Paul used in 1 Corinthians 16, 13 is where we get the word andrizo, which for a lot of the men in this church, they know what that word is. I teach it. I wrote a book on it called Andrizo Man. It's in the back. You can pick it up after and it's a blessing of a book because it teaches you the five principles of an Andrizo man living. And a woman, women that, that, that are looking for a husband or want to help their husband, get the book yeah. because it'll show you what kind of husband to pick. Yeah. And it'll show you the husband that you have now, how to strengthen him. 
But listen, Andrizo means to act like a man, to be brave, to be courageous, to man up. So basically, Paul was saying to the men of Corinthian, listen, if you want to secure your future in unsteady times, and be, you got to be steady and strong, you got to Andrizo up. Come on, my Andrizo brothers. One, two, three. Andrizo. Andrizo. It means you gotta, you gotta, you got to be strong in these times. Why is this so important of a message? And, and it's burning in my spirit because we're living in an unsteady times, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Man, 2020 has been crazy. Who would have ever predicted this? Nobody. I wish I said, God, you know, you could have told me to invest in, you know, masks and gloves and sanitizers. <laughs> Those are the only ones making, doing well right now, right? And so, but what is it? It's because, I mean, right now, if any time, we need people who are strong and steady. We need it in our leadership. We need it in our, in our, in our families. We need it in our church. We need strong and steady leaders. We need strong and steady hearts through this. Proverbs 24.10 says this, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Your strength is small. So many people are freaking out and fear is gripping them and anxiety and all these things. And we'll talk about all these things. So I, I wanted to bring you this message and I want to bring you one of my favorite examples of someone who was in unsteady times, someone who was in a tough, tough spot probably worse than you can ever imagine happened to this individual and how he stayed steady in unsteady times and was able to give his victory at the end. And it's in a story. I won't have time to really elaborate in it. I'm going to paraphrase it, and then hopefully you can go home and, and really dig into it. But it's in 1 Samuel chapter 30, and I'll give you the, the, the paraphrased version of the story. It's King David. He's not king yet. He's just David, the, the mighty warrior. And he is uh, leading basically a, a whole group of outlaws that have joined him in the wilderness. He's been running from Saul, who he served faithfully. Saul is the king, and he's, went, he's gone nuts. And he's trying to kill David. And so he has been running, living in caves and all of that. And he has one little town that they kind of took over called Ziglag that was given to him. And his family is there while him and his army is out raiding different other enemies and, and, and getting loot from those areas. And he comes back, and the, his city, the enemy came around, burned the city down, and took everyone away. Wives, children, everything gone. And they get there in their little town. The only little thing he even had to call home is burnt down to the ground. This is what's happening in this chapter. And David and his men, the Bible says, begin to cry. These are mighty men now. Remember, David is the one who killed the giant. Start to cry till the Bible says they had no more strength in them. That's some serious crying. Anybody ever cried that way? I have. When I lost my first wife and when I lost my, my mother, man, I cried. I'm talking about clown, deep, snot crying, right? Where you think your heart's just going to shut, stop beating. I've been there. David's there. I mean, I can't imagine lose, going through that. Coming home, your home is burnt, and your kids and, and wife is gone. And everything you have is gone. People have experienced that with storms and hurricanes and, and things that have happened in this world. It's been crazy this, 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 this year. But listen what David does. So all the men, the Bible says, start crying. They start complaining. They start getting bitter in the heart, the Bible says. And then they start throwing fault, and they point at David, and they start picking up stones. Yeah. They're about to kill the very answer to their victory. Yeah. That's what happens. We, 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 we kill the very thing that, 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 that gives us it. We blame God. We get mad at, at the Bible. I don't mean that that, that's the very answer. He is the very one that can bring you the victory. He's the very one. His word is the very thing that can give you and recover all. We get mad at God. We keep going to church. We quit praying. We quit doing that. Not David. David, and here's my first, first point to you. David, if you want to be steady in unsteady times, you must stay steady in your godly routines. 
You must stay steady in your godly routines. A lot of people have asked me, James, how come you seem so peaceful at this time? How come you seem so positive? How come you seem so encouraged? I'm, I, and that's what I'm going to teach you now, how I did it, how I'm still doing it, okay? Because I'm human just like anyone else. I can give in to fear. I can give in to anxiety. I can give in to a lot of those things, okay? My mother was a worry, a, a, a worry wart. She just worried about everything. If I was late as a kid, she was calling the hospital, not a friend's house, the hospital, <laughs> Or, or if it was or when I got older, it was the the, the police department. Um, <laughs> she was calling the worst scenarios. And one day she went home at 62. She feared her whole life cancer. Guess what? Yeah. Cancer took her life. And so I didn't. I was determined not to take carry on that generational thing. And so does it try to come on me? Yes. But I stayed steady in my godly routines. And so did David. David went to the Lord in prayer. That was not by coincidence. That was not by chance. That was one of David's habits, something he developed as a young man, as a shepherd boy for his father's sheep. He was a writer of many of the psalms that we have. Many of the songs that we sing today came from the writings of David when he was a shepherd boy, singing to the Lord. One of his jobs besides being a, a warrior for Saul when he was working for Saul, was he played the harp for Saul. He was a musician, loved to worship. And so David knew where his strength came from. He knew where his answer came from. So he kept his godly routine. And the Bible said he went and prayed and strengthened himself in the Lord. He knew where the source of his power came from. He knew that he could not let the circumstances around him dictate his thinking and his thoughts. He knew that this was the, where his peace would come from. Philippians 4, I didn't give them the scripture. It came to me this morning as I was praying over you guys. Philippians 4, verse 6 is a scripture that I often read. It says this, do not be anxious in anything, but in everything be in prayer and petition before the Lord with thanksgiving. Bring your requests to the Lord. Watch this. And the peace of God, watch this, would guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Listen, people were like freaking out, man. Oh, I can't go outside. We can't do this. We can't do that. And I'm calm, and I'm like getting up in the morning. I'm keeping my same routines. I'm getting up in the morning. I'm spending time with the Lord. I'm reading my word. I even started doing prayer walks and walking, praying around my, 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 uh, my neighborhood, and people would be walking by. When it first hit, the whole first pandemic thing hit, I'd be walking around my neighborhood. People would be like, you know, like way far away from me. I'm like, bro, you need me to be praying for you, right? I'm praying for my neighborhood. I'm praying for my family. I'm praying for my church. I'm praying. It, it, it stirred up even stronger prayer in me. Why? Because it was a habit of my life. It was a habit of my life. I would spend the first 30 minutes of my walk just praying in tongues. And strengthening myself in the Lord. Because I knew if I did not guard my heart and my mind that the peace of God that the Bible says surpasses all understanding, transcends all understanding, that I would give in to all the fears. So the first thing to stay steady in unsteady times is stay steady in your routines. So many of us broke away from our routines. We broke away from, we just slept later, and we, we just didn't even take care. You know, I started running. I started exercise. I couldn't go to the gym, so I started doing everything else. I wind up, I'm back down to the weight I was in high school. I weigh where I weigh in high school, the lightest I've ever been since high school. And, I, and everybody that, I, that I've known gained weight, I lost weight. Why? I just started to do other things. Yeah. I adjusted my diet. <laughs> I knew I wouldn't exercise as much, so I couldn't eat as much. And I started doing other things, but I stayed on a routine. I stayed on a routine, and the routine is what kept me up. I was reading about these guys, the people, the characteristics of the people that survived the, the, the horrible, um, you know, concentration camps of, of the war. And, and these Jewish men that survived, this was the characteristics I saw in all of them. The reason they survived is that they kept a routine in the concentration camp. One of them would wash and bathe even though he didn't have any soap or water. He would scrub himself every morning, wash and bathe, and shave. 
And, they, and one, and one of the, the guys that was writing this book says, why are you doing this? What a waste of energy and time. And it's not even hygienic because you're not going to have water and soap. He goes, it doesn't matter. He goes, it is, he says, it is a posture of my heart. I'm going to keep the routine of taking care of myself because they are trying to diminish us into animals. And I will not become an animal. I will keep my, I will keep my, my nobility of mine up. And they survived because they kept a routine. They kept their prayers. They kept believing in the, in the father of Abraham and the father of Isaac and, John, and Jacob. They kept believing and they survived while everybody else was perishing because of routine. So David calls on this, his priests. I thought that was funny. Here's a, a band of outlaws and David has a priest with him. Yeah, on. You see, David couldn't go to church. He would have. He would have went to the tabernacle. But the tabernacle was in Saul's territory, his enemy at the time. So he brought the church to him, kind of like what we did with Zoom, kind of like what we did with, with uh, well, while we were home and some right now watching. Praise God, you're bringing church to you, and that's good. And David did the same thing. So he brings them and he tells them, this is a, I can't get into this, maybe the second service. But he gets in and he says, bring the ephod. The ephod has such powerful, powerful thought to it. It's, it's, it was basically a vest. I'll give you the synopsis of it. It was basically a beautiful vest with 12 stones in it. And it was what the priests would wear. The 12 stones were the, the tribes of, Ab of, of Israel. And God kept them close. It was a symbol of keeping God's people close to his heart. Do you know you're close to his heart? He kept his people close to the priest's heart. And in that vest was a pouch that had two stones in it. Usually it was black and white stone. And they called it the Urim and the Thummim. And those were like prophetic stones and David had a routine of asking God for direction. That's how they got direction back then. It was a symbol of the Holy Spirit today to give us direction. So then the, the, the priest would pull out after prayer and petitioning God. He would pull it out and he would say, and some say that one would glow or, or the white would say go as he pulled out. And he pulled out the white. It means yes, go and pursue. Go ahead and battle. Go to battle with that enemy or don't if it came out black. So it was a way of them getting God's direction. So David went to God to get direction, and he asked him, God, should I pursue the enemy? Should I pursue him? That's all. He asked one question. God says, yes, pursue, and you will overtake, and you will recover all. That third one, God just threw it in. So he pursued, but he got the direction from God, not from CNN, not from, from Fox News, not from a, he got it from God. Come on. He got it from God. And he said, come on. The men are walking towards him with stones. And all of a sudden, David jumps on his horse. You know, if, they, if, if, if David thought anything, at least I'm a moving target. You know what I mean? And he's, he, he jumps on it, and he pursues God's direction for his life. And they drop it. They go, well, looks like he knows what he's doing. Let's jump on. And they go and read the story. It's beautiful. They take the enemy down. And they recover all, and there's so much more to it. But David had a habit of knowing where to go. Guys, you have to keep your godly routines going. Yeah. Yeah. Your godly habits keeps you steady, keeps you steady. One of the things I love about your pastor, and I'm not just saying this because he's one of my closest friends, is because I've seen it in his life. He has been steady, steady, pastoring here for over 25 years now, almost 30, because we've known each other for a long time. 30 years, he's been pastoring here. That's steady. Pastor uh, Dwayne in, in Granville, steady. If there's anything, he even does this with his hands. Stay steady, James, right? Steady. He doesn't get in one, in one ditch or the other. He just stays steady. Pastor Paul is steady. Believe in God and faith, even fighting cancer. Steady. Steady. And that's what it takes and our routines. Keep those habits going. When, I, when, when the pandemic first hit, man, I just said, okay, get up, James. I know you, know you don't feel like shaving, but shave. I know you don't care, I mean, your hair, no, nobody's cutting hair, but keep your hair nice. Keep steady. Why? I was, it's a mindset that I had to keep steady. And we're coming through, we're coming through, amen? The second thing, stay steady in your thinking. Oh, wow, it, it seems so simple. Look, my principles here are not, they're not rocket science. It's simple, but.
But it's the simple things that we miss sometimes. It's the simple things that we just need to do to make a difference. I was telling some people uh, in, in the awakening that we just had last week, that's the second level of our manhood camps that we do. I was saying it because there's a physical aspect to the awakening because they're warriors now. I teach them how to be warriors for God. And I said, well, there's some physical ele uh, elements you got to have as a warrior in the natural and in the warrior in God's kingdom. you got to take care of yourself. And I said, guys, let me just give you three things to do because a lot of them were struggling in the physical um, training of it. I go, drink a lot of water. Uh, do something to exercise, walking if you need to. Just do that. Drink, drink a lot of water, walk, and eat small portions, and you will lose weight and you'll feel phenomenal. Yeah. If that's all you do, walk, eat, drink water, eat smaller portions, yeah. you'll be fine. And it's simple, mm -hmm. but very few people do. Yeah. Stay steady. Okay, I'm moving on. Somebody say, just move on, James. Okay, <laughs> stay steady in your thinking. Proverbs 23, verse 7 says, For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That's man and woman. As we think in our hearts, so is we. Is we. <laughs> is we. Is we. Um, just as our godly routines and habits keep you informed and, st and, and steady, what you think on directs the course of your heart. David said this. Remember, here's David writing in Psalms. This is his routine. God my heart, Psalms 108, verse 1, God, my heart is steady. I will sing and praise you with all my being. He knew how to keep his heart steady. Put your hand out, Psalms 119. Here's another writing to him, verse 173. The message says it this way. Put your hand out and steady me since I've chosen to live, my, live by your counsel. I'm, I'm enjoying this half of my life because, you know, I'm about to turn 60 in a couple of years, and so I'm in that fathering stage now. So I'm fathering a lot of young men, and I'm enjoying it. Just a lot of them didn't have fathers in their life. So I'm introducing them into one of my greatest passions besides God and his work is, is bow hunting. So I'm introducing a lot of these young guys to bow hunting. Cabela's and, and all those places love me because I'm always bringing these guys in there. But this guy, I just took him hunting for the first time, his first time ever shooting the bow. Now, in the, in the, on the field shooting at targets, he was phenomenal. He was like, man, I'm great, Pastor. I said, yeah, it's a whole different thing when you got an animal in front of you. <laughs> then you got to deal with adrenaline, right? So he sees his first, it's a pig. You know, we got a lot of pigs in Texas. A big pig comes in. And I go, take this pig. We got to get rid of these pigs. And he goes, so I, the pig's coming through the woods, and he's already drawn. I go, way too soon, way too soon. And he's like shaking, shaking. I said, relax, relax, relax. So I'm counseling him. And he, the pig comes in, and he draws on this pig. And he's shaking so bad. So I reach over, and I steady him. I said, steady, stay calm. Put it behind the shoulder. Relax. Relax. Focus. Remember your training. He shoots it in the tail. <laughs> the thing runs off. Shoots literally the tail. I go, you couldn't have done that if you wanted to. Of course, it just nicks the tail. It runs off. And he's like, <laughs> he's like <laughs> I go, breathe, breathe. Calm down, stay down, sit down, sit down. He sits down and he goes, why am I shaking so bad? I go, that's called adrenaline. <laughs> and that is the difference from a target. What am I saying? That's what God does for us when we start to renew our mind in his thinking. Watch what God even gives us a little help in what to think about. Let me just tell you, he talks about it in Proverbs Four, he says, guard your heart. But then watch this. In Philippians 4, 8, he says, think on these things. God is just even helping us there. There's a lot of things to think about, but just think on these things. Finally, my brothers and sisters, whatever is true, think on that. Whatever is noble, think on that. Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything be excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Do you not think that thoughts come to me when the world is going through all of this and thoughts come to me from the enemy about this, I have to constantly be taking those thoughts that are contrary, the Bible says, to the word of God and pulling them down and saying, I'm not going to think that. That is not the way uh, God has taught me to think. I'm going to think this way. 
And God, yes, I don't understand about all of this that's going on in our country. I don't understand about all the disunity. I don't understand about all the issues. I don't understand about these viruses that are crazy. I don't understand. But I am trusting in you. Come on. I'm going to the thum, the, the urim and the thrum, and I'm saying, Holy Spirit, come on. I have to have discernment right here. I have to have. That's what that was. That was their discernment. I need to know what to do for my family, for my children. Do I wear a mask? Do I not wear a mask? Whatever. God, help me. Hey, we we have to keep our thinking focused on him. There was a story about these two men that they were being interviewed. I thought it was so fascinating. One, their father was an alcoholic. One grew up, became an alcoholic. The other one grew up and became a successful business sober man. They asked him the question. They said, why are you the way you are? Watch this. Both guys said, because our father was an alcoholic. Same question, same uh, answer. Because our father was an alcoholic. But the outcomes were different on both of them. How they thought. If you get anything, get this. What happens to us is an objective reality. What we do with what happens to us is a subjective choice. Do you hear what I just said? What happens to us is is an objective reality, but what we do with what happens to us is a subjective choice. It's all about how you react and choose to what's happening. And that is a lot to do with your thinking. And the third thing, and I'm going to close, is stay steady in your faith. Stay steady. Another word for faith is convictions. Stay steady in your faith. Don't be double-minded, as as James talked about. Don't be wishy-washy, tossed to back and forth. Stay steady in your faith. I kept telling all my guys because we couldn't even have our meetings anymore. We started doing Zoom calls. So all my guys, every Monday I met with them Monday night. And I said, guys, stay steady, stay steady. And Drizo men, stay steady in your faith. God's going to see us through this. God has a plan. It's always a good plan. Jeremiah 29, uh, 11 says, he, his thoughts towards us are good and not of evil for a future and a hope. Yes. Stay steady, stay steady. Hold. Remember Braveheart? Hold. Stay steady. And that's the key. Man, I can say so much about faith. Faith is everything. Your faith and your convictions is everything in life. And if you put those three things to action in your life, you will stay steady in unsteady times, and you will see your victory as David did. It's a beautiful story. Go home and read it. First Samuel 30. It's a beautiful, beautiful example of staying steady in unsteady times. David didn't realize within 24 hours of the worst day of his life, his enemy was going to be killed in battle, and the kingdom was going to open up for him to be king. 24 hours of him losing everything, David is crowned king of Israel. But the day before was the worst day of his life. But he stayed steady in unsteady times. Father, I pray, and I thank you, that, Lord, you have the people here. And, Lord, like David brought Abathar to the moment, Lord, and prayed with him. Lord, you bring us the Holy Spirit, and we pray with the Holy Spirit now to strengthen us, to keep us steady in unsteady times. And, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father, that we're going to see your victory as we stay steady in our godly routines steady in our thinking, and steady in our faith. In Jesus' name, amen.